The other thing we use when we're looking at a function call in interp is subst, because that's how we take the 3, put it in place of x everywhere in plus xx. So let's look at the subst function. I've got some tests here that show, well, let's look at the bottom version of the test first. So if we have 8 that we put in place of x, and we're putting in place of x all the x's and 9, it turns out that nothing happens. We still get a 9 out. But if we're putting x in place of x in an expression that's x, that means we get an 8. So this would happen if we have, say, define identity x, return x, and then whatever identity is later called with 8, then we're going to substitute this 8 in for x everywhere in x. So that will be how this kind of, kind of example happens. And in that case, what we want out is the 8. But if we had define identity y, take x, return y, we replace the x with 8, we should still just get y back out. That'll be a bad y, but that's what we should get out from subst. The x might be nested in, uh, in an expression, right? So, well, let's leave this one alone, since that's not really the identity function. Let's call this uh, define add that takes an x and adds x to y. Then when we add 8, that means we need to take 8, substitute it for x everywhere in plus xy. Again, let's take 8, substitute it for x everywhere in plus xy. Then what we expect to get back is plus 8y. The y is going to be bad again, as it turns out, but sub shouldn't have to worry about that. That's interp's problem. And so on. What if, last case, if we have x as the argument to an application and we're replacing x with 8, it should be replaced in the application as well. These examples are the same examples, just expressed without parse. And the reason I'm doing that is just so that we get used, uh, until you get used to parse, um, see the actual expression that we need to cover in our implementation of subst. Subst has three arguments, an expression, a symbol, and an expression. So which one drives the template? If we look at our examples, then what we see is the result depends primarily on this last argument. Right? And this first argument is more like it's along for the ride. It only gets used just like the for symbol is along for the ride when we encounter a, a match. So we're going to drive the template based on this last expression. It'll be a type case of an expression n. If n is a number expression, then that means we have just a number that we're trying to replace all of the fours with, but uh, that means nothing happens. That's just like our first test case here. So we can just return num e n, uh, or we can just return n unchanged. How about the identifier case? If we've got an identifier and it's got some symbol name s, in this case, it's like these examples, idx and idy, where we need to check whether this symbol inside the identifier matches the one that we're going to replace. So that is an if equal this s is equal to the for symbol. If it is equal, like in this case, what do we want to do? Where did num e8 come from? It came from this first argument. So in that case, we want to return the what that we're replacing all the x's with. If they don't match, like in the second case, then the expression is unchanged. We return n as it is. That covers the first two cases. Then we have pluses, which have a left and a right. Uh, when we have a left, we want to recur because it's an expression. At least the template suggests that we want to. And the right is also an expression. What do we want to do in general? So what happened here is we had an idx and an idy. The recursive call of substituting 8 for x and x would give us 8, which matches what we want here. And the recursive call of substituting 8 for x and y would give us y, which is what we want here. So in fact, we just have to put the results of the recursive substitution back together as a plus e. And the same reasoning is going to give us a multi looks the same. The last case that we have to deal with is an appy, 
where we have a function name as a symbol and we have an argument expression. So we have an s to deal with and we have an argument expression which since it's an expression we guess that we might want to recur. Let's look at our example. When we had an app e double the recursion substitutes 8 for x and x to give us 8. That's what we wanted and it looks like we want to just put it back together with its function name. So with those changes, let's try running our tests. And it looks like those pass. And we can even run the parse versions of the test to make sure that those all pass too, even though they're the same tests.